Hello. So usually I would put together a new video whenever I'm releasing an update to the eLearning Magic Toolkit plugin. This time around I thought I'd try something a bit different and change the format to something more like a developer diary to give you some useful insights into the inner workings of the latest voice activated generative AI APIs. The race to create the leading agentic AI developer platform is really heating up now. For some time since around October, we've had access to the real-time API from OpenAI, which delivers extremely rapid data transfer direct to the OpenAI platform through the use of WebSockets for building conversational-led user experiences. And I have another video of this on my YouTube channel showing a demo of this in action if you want to go check that out. But the real-time API still has plenty of issues with it still being in beta at the time of recording. And many developers, myself included, seem to be encountering problems, including audio responses seemingly cutting off before they should. And also just the choice of voices that OpenAI currently offers, which I'll just have a listen to some of these. Hi, I'm Sage, here to bring a gentle presence whenever you need a moment of peace. Hey, it's me, Verse. Let's take it easy and enjoy the day together. So yeah, not that good at all, especially when you compare that to the quality of what Eleven Labs' new agentic solution is capable of, which we'll come back to in just a second. But around the same time as when the real-time beta was announced, OpenAI also made available a new Create Chat Completions model called the GPT-4 Audio Preview, which allows us to both submit and receive data from the OpenAI platform as part of a ChatGPT-like user experience albeit with the same limited selection of voices right now, but in comparison to real time, the cost of using this model is far more economical at scale, and the beta, from what I've seen myself, does work quite consistently well. So I very much wanted to bring the new model into the eLearning Magic Toolkit to make it available as soon as possible, and this is what will be coming as part of the next 2.11 version release of the plugin. So here on my WordPress site where I have the latest version installed, I can get to the eLearning Magic Toolkit settings screen here. And you can see that we have a new and improved interface for accessing all of the settings and features that the toolkit offers. So we can get into the OpenAI platform settings right here. And from the model drop down list, you'll see that we've added support for the new O1 mini model, which could deliver better results for coding and mathematical applications. But as well as that, you'll see that we now have included the new GPT-4 or audio preview. And as soon as you selected that, you'll see some additional options appear at the bottom of the screen. So depending on the output modality, if you just wish to have audio in and text returned, or if you want to have text and audio out. And with that option selected, the next option becomes available where you can select one of those default voices available from OpenAI. Okay, so to see this brand new model in action and to give all eLearning Magic Toolkit customers the biggest leg up to get started using the model, I've created a template file in Articulate Storyline which can be used to demonstrate each model in action. And the great news is that this template is going to be made available to download for free directly from the Discover eLearning website for all new and existing eLearning Magic Toolkit customers. So what I'm going to do is just publish the template project as is to my desktop and then save the published project as a zip file. And then in the eLearning Magic Toolkit settings screen, I'll come over to the Upload Storyline 360 content screen and select the file and click Upload. And now the content has been added to my uploaded activities list where I can just take the short code and place that onto any page that I like and click the Save button. And there's our activity all set, ready to go. So to begin with, the first slide of the template is just a simple demo of the existing Create Chat Completions text-based API, which I've had built into the plugin more or less from the moment that it became available to the public. So let's now jump into the next slide, which demonstrates the audio in and text response from the new audio preview. So we'll need to go back into the eLearning Magic Toolkit settings screen and change the model to the new audio preview model. And let's change output modalities to text for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the button now on the slide and I'll talk into my microphone and you'll see what both the model and the template does. Hi there, could you please tell me the square root of 81?
Okay, so you saw there that the response was not necessarily as rapid as a real-time model would be, but nevertheless we got the voice recognition and text response all part of the same single action. And in Storyline, the answer response has been converted to a variable which triggers a new layer in order for that to be shown on the screen. So I could go ahead and click on this button again and ask another question, but let's carry on now and move on to the next slide. So this is going to show us the audio in as well as the audio response coming from the OpenAI model. So once again, I need to come over to the settings screen and this time we'll change output modalities to text plus audio and we'll keep the selected voice as Ash. All right, and I'll go ahead and hit the button one more time and you'll see what happens this time. Hi there, could you please tell me what is the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Yeah, sure. Could you please tell me whether the number 92 is divisible by 4? To determine if 92 is divisible by 4, we can check if the number formed by its last two digits is divisible by 4. The last two digits of 92 are 92, and 92 divided by 4 equals 23, which is an integer. Therefore, 92 is divisible by 4. Okay, it took a bit of a long winded route there to get to the answer but you know it got there in the end so the thing about this is that the model itself could be fine-tuned better in storyline in order to behave in a certain way or respond with context documents for example as part of the features already included in the e-learning magic toolkit so there's lots of potential for what this can ultimately do but lastly, I'm going to come on to the final slide here, which is a demonstration of the same uh, input and output uh, audio format model, but including uh, function calls. And if you're perhaps unfamiliar with the term uh, function calls, uh, the idea with that is that it's all part of building the agentic capabilities that an AI assistant might have in order to perform actions on the user behalf. So in the coding side of things, it all comes down to setting up our tool calls in the context of the environment and also providing the context to the AI for what actions it is capable of performing. And when we come to design how we build our AI assistance directly into e-learning experiences in Articulate Storyline, for example, we can begin to build automation that uses the AI to trigger any kind of action that is typically found in Articulate Storyline. So obviously that opens up a real world of opportunities. So for this demo, what I've created is the ability for the AI to change a custom Boolean value from false to true or true to false. And when that happens, I have set up some uh, simple JavaScript that will change a project variable in Storyline using the setVar method so that we can see that the update is taking place right here in the bottom left corner of the screen. So if we go ahead and ask the AI to do something for us now, we should hopefully see the result. Hi there, I'm hoping that you can change the boolean value to true for me. The boolean value has been set to true. Okay, so what you might have noticed there is that there was a significant amount of time taken between when the action took place on the slide to when we heard the audio response back from the OpenAI platform. And that's because at this moment in time, it appears that the tool call responses from the chat completions API are returned back as their own response object without the inclusion of any audio delta, unlike the way that the real-time API operates, for example. So what we have to do, or the way in which I've set up my JavaScript here in the template, is for there to be a separate function that can rerun the request to the AI without including the tool call in order to get that audio response back as a second response. And we ultimately chain that after the tool call response has taken place. 
So it's not perfect by any means, but it's completely functional and I think a great start to the agentic features that I have planned to incorporate into the toolkit. And on that note, I'd like to show you one more really big feature that's getting added to this version of the plugin version, which I'm really excited about, which is the eLearning Magic Toolkit API. So just to recap, one of the key features of the eLearning Magic Toolkit is that it provides the ability to store user variable values from any Articulate Storyline user activity made accessible on your WordPress site so that those values can be stored to the user profile. And then these variables can be used in other projects, for example, as part of custom reporting tables that you may wish to create on your platform. So the idea with the eLearning Magic Toolkit API is to make all stored storyline user variable data captured on your platform accessible to external assistants, such as an AI agent that you might have created on another platform via a protected HTTP endpoint. So that will feed the current up-to-date user information directly to your agent to work with as part of whatever task you are asking it to do. And the opportunities for how this can potentially be used to work and develop with are massive. But let me show you a working example here uh, using some data that I've captured and, and I'm accessing using the API on my website. And we're going to go ahead and set up an 11 Labs agent that will have access to this data through the API in order to provide us with conversation based reports. So 11 Labs agents provide a conversational experience to the end user, which all takes place in close to real time. And we can design our agent to perform a specific task for us. So in this example, I've set up an agent with a fairly simple system prompt designed to provide me with a report on user responses that have been captured during a storyline activity on my learning platform. So just a second ago, we were looking at the API endpoint data coming from my website, where as part of a storyline activity, the users have provided me with information about their favorite animal, their favorite color, and their favorite food. And at this moment, two users have completed the activity, Dave Lerner and myself, Chris Hodgson. So what I can do with my agent here in 11 labs is instruct the agent to get the most up-to-date data it needs by calling upon the get user data function or tool. And then in the agent settings here, I can set up a tool as a webhook, which the agent can use in order to query that endpoint provided by the eLearning Magic Toolkit API in order to extract the data that it needs to answer any specific question. So with all of that in place, I can go ahead and start a conversation with the agent directly in testing mode here in 11 labs. And I'm going to ask it some questions about what my users got up to during the activity. And I'll keep the endpoint data loaded up on the screen so that you can see how accurate it is with its responses. So let's go ahead and do that now. Hi, how can I assist you today? Hi there, I understand that you can help me to understand some of the responses that my users give to the questions in their online activity. Certainly, I'd be happy to help you understand the responses from your users' online activity. To provide you with accurate information, I'll need to retrieve the most current user data. Let me do that for you right away. Great, I've retrieved the data for you. What specific information would you like to know about your users' responses? Well, could we start by you telling me the names of the users that have completed the activity so far? Certainly. Based on the data I've retrieved, two users have completed the online activity so far. Their names are Dave Lerner, Chris Hodgson. Is there any specific information you'd like to know about these users or their responses? Yes, so the activity was designed to find out what each user's favorite animal was. So could you give me maybe a percentage breakdown of what the responses were? Of course. I'll analyze the data for the favorite animal responses and provide you with a percentage breakdown. From the data we have, Dave's favorite animal, dogs, Chris's favorite animal, cats. With only two users, we have a simple 50-50 split. Dogs, 50% cats, 50%. Would you like any additional information about these responses or the users? 
Let's move on to the favorite color. So did any of the users give uh, red as their favorite color? Yes, one of the users did give red as their favorite color. Let me provide you with that information. Chris Hodgson selected red as his favorite color. The other user, Dave Lerner, chose yellow as his favorite color. Is there anything else you'd like to know about the user's color preferences? Sure. So um, let's say uh, I was um, going to treat Dave Lerner to his favorite food as a end of week treat. What should I or which restaurant uh, do you um, recommend I visit um, in terms of a fast food chain, maybe? Based on the data we have for Dave Lerner, his favorite food is burgers. Given this information, I'd recommend visiting a popular fast food chain that specializes in burgers. Some well-known options could include McDonald's, Burger King, or Wendy's. These chains are known for their variety of cool. burger options. Okay, well, thank you very much for your help. That's been uh, really insightful. You're welcome. So that's a simple demonstration there, but you can start to imagine just how powerful this feature can be in creating not just agentic AI experiences for the user, but also as part of a richer and more dynamic reporting mechanism for learning facilitators as part of this learning platform built in WordPress using our plugin. And I'd like to show you just one more thing that will be coming to the eLearning Magic Toolkit in the new year. But everything that you just saw there that the Eleven Labs agent platform can do will very soon be coming to the eLearning Magic Toolkit as well. Meaning that very soon it will be possible to use the Eleven Labs agentic AI embedded directly into any Articulate Storyline activity. So not only can it have a real-time conversation with the user and have access to current data through the use of function calls, but as it's directly integrated into Storyline, we can also have the agent perform actions on the user's behalf. So let me go ahead and give you a quick demo. Hi, what can I do for you today? Hi there, my name's Chris. How are you doing today? Hello, Chris. It's nice to meet you. I'm doing well, thank you for asking. As an AI oh, sorry assistant. for interrupting you, but I was just wondering if you could update the custom variable value to the name that I just gave you. Of course, Chris. I'd be happy to update the custom variable value with your name. I'll do that for you right away. I've updated the custom variable value to Chris for you. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, could you please change the variable value again to the location where you would typically find Santa Claus. Certainly. I'd be happy to change the variable value to the location typically associated with Santa Claus. I've updated the custom variable value to North Pole for you. That's where Santa Claus is traditionally said to live and work. Okay, is there anything you. else you'd like help with? You're welcome. I'm glad I could help update the variable value for you. So what you just saw there and what's really cool about the Eleven Labs agent is that it can recognize interruption events, which we can then act upon within our activity to cut the sound and also allow the user to make their follow on prompts. And again, the actions that the agent can potentially trigger on the user's behalf directly in Articulate Storyline includes every possible trigger that Storyline 360 provides to us. So an absolutely huge range of opportunity. So there's many more agentic based updates coming to the eLearner Magic Toolkit very soon. And I hope that you've enjoyed this developer diary format. Let me know if you did. Keep your eyes open for the version release and also the template. And I look forward to seeing you next time.